I have another hot tent stove I want to share with you today. This time it's from the company Viver. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, two things. First off, I'd like to thank the company Viver for reaching out to me and offering to send me this wood stove so that I could share it with you. Number two, the stove is brand new. It has not had a fire in it yet. That's what we're going to accomplish in this video. So it in no way can be a review. It's going to be a first burn preview, give you my initial thoughts type of video. So what I thought I would do right now, though, is give you a, a look at all the components of the stove as they arrived. I am then I'm going to bring the camera in closer, give you some a bit of detail on some of the components. Uh, I just want you to see the quality of the construction. Then, of course, we're going to get outside and use the stove. All right, quickly, what I want to do is just go over the components that came with the Viva wood stove. Then I'll give you some specifications for the stove. Then, of course, we'll get outside and we'll do some testing with it. And I'll give you some close ups at the same time. So this is the manual such that it is that came with the wood stove. It is two sheets that are double sided, mostly with pictures, but with some text as well. Honestly, it could have been better, but I'm OK with the information that it provided. Now, body of the stove obviously has folding legs in the bottom seem to be very well constructed. On the sides are shelves that fold down for storage and transport. Lock into place during use seem to be fairly heavy duty and be pulled up and used like this for handles for transportation. So, you know, quite a good design there. The stove came with nine sections of stove pipe. Uh, most of them are, well, they all are 11 and 3 quarters inch in length. Five of them are uh, three inches in diameter and four of them are two and three quarter inches in diameter and the smaller ones nest inside of the larger ones for space saving when storing inside of the stove. So obviously if you have larger and smaller chimney pieces you're going to need a reducer so that's provided to reduce the chimney size as it goes up. Now, when you get a 90.6 inch chimney like this, you're gonna to wanna to stabilize it for heavy winds. So this ring was provided, that goes on over top of the reducer. Pipe section goes on. And now with these small carabiners and some guy lines, I can uh, stake the pipe out to keep it from being from tipped over by the wind. Put those aside, one section of the stove pipe is different from the others and this is the one that has the attachment point for the back of the stove. I'll be showing you this again in detail of course when we get it outside but you can see the rectangular hole at the back that where that is where it uh, hooks in. I'll show you again I'll show you that when we get outside. Here's a unique feature for it. It does have an ash pan which is really quite nice makes going to make it easy for cleaning out. That ash pan also doubles as the uh, damper or not the damper but the draft control for allowing air into the stove. The stove does not have a damper in the stove and the pipes themselves. Uh, I would prefer to see a damper, a damper. I don't know that it's necessary. Apparently, according to the website, it is not. We'll see when we get it outside. You can buy aftermarket dampers in that section of, or pipe section size. So if I feel the need, I'll add one later. Here's a unique feature to the stove, by the way. There are no gasket seals around the door, so this is intended for well-ventilated tents, uh, tarps, yurts, that type of thing, but not for indoors. So inside, uh, here is where the fire plate goes. Here's the fire plate. Look at this. Very different. One heavy piece of stainless steel. Holes are only drilled up to about half the height of it, and they are kind of pointed like a Christmas tree or an arrow. I think that helps you guide the plate inside here for knowing where it goes. And here's the last thing I want to show you as far as features of it, and that is that the top plate of the stove is made of a solid piece of aluminum, about a quarter inch thickness. And what that allows is for the stove to be used in two ways. With everything installed and the chimney on, you would have a stove, wood stove that you could use inside of your tent. But it also allows the thing to be used like a uh, stove, cooking stove out of doors as well. So that's just a little bit different. Now, I do have concerns that this may or may not warp, and there is some indication in the instructions that it may warp the first times it used, but if you flip it and put it back on, burn it the game, it goes back tr to true. The other concern, of course, is when it's laying on top, am I going to be losing any smoke out through? 
Again, that's one of the things we'll see when we get it outdoors. All right, quickly, let's go over the specifications for the stove so that we can get outside and get the fire going in it. So the overall length in this direction is 15.25 inches. The overall height from the ground to the top is 14.25 inches. The width across is 8.25 inches and the firebox is 8.25 inches in height. It's listed as having an 800 cubic inch capacity on the inside. Its weight is 23.8 pounds and it is made from 304 stainless steel with the exception of that top plate of aluminum of course and as I mentioned it's rated as having a 90.6 inch chimney. All right with all those specifications and all that information I've given you let's get outside and get a fire going in it. All right well today is testing day for my Viva wood stove first burn. I am out of my backyard. It is just around the freezing mark, quite windy, so I'll try to protect the microphone from the wind so we don't get too much noise. And it's snowing. Well, very lightly, but I keep getting these little mini blizzards flowing over me, so all good, just the way you should be testing a wood stove out. So a couple of things since I shot the other segments of the video. First off, I don't think I showed the canvas bag. This is actually quite a critical piece to the storage and transportation of the wood stove from Viver. It's nice to have everything collected into one place. It keeps your bay or your car or whatever you got clean, which is great. But not all of the pieces of the stove fit into the stove for transport. Uh, I, that's a comment I want to make right now because I'm going to address it later in another video. And that is, this was a real puzzle, getting the pieces into the stove. It took me quite a while to figure out how it was done. My bad was I didn't pay attention when I took everything out when it came out of the box when I was excited to get it. And I didn't see how it had been assembled that way. I thought it would just go back in. No, not at all. So what I will do is, if you're interested, I will be making a separate video just on how to pack all the components into the stove, or all except one, as you'll see in a moment. And yeah, okay, so let's take everything out. So the way you would normally do this, believe it or not, is turn it upside down. Turn it upside down, because that's the way you pack it when you go to transport it. Although it does seem to make more sense to take it out the other way. And you're gonna see two pieces fall out as I do this. The fire grate will not go in the stove with all the pipes, so it's a choice. You can put the fire grate in, or you can put that aluminum top plate in, either one. I chose to keep the fire grate out. Of course, the other piece is just the ring that holds the carabiners that would hold the guidelines. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bag aside. Open her up. My tongs slash, I don't know, ash pan, whatever else it is. Pieces are gonna come out. I'm not even gonna to try to make a whole lot of sense of this right now for the reason I just mentioned, but I will. Right, there's an adapter. Just take everything out. Quickly put everything together. I will be giving you some close-ups. Then we'll get a fire started in it. I got pieces rolling away from me. And how am I going to get that last one out? Oh yeah, the easiest way to get that last one out, which is the top plate, is to pull the ash pan out. All right, so here's funny. I thought I had put this top plate, the aluminum top plate, inside of the ash pan for storage. I did not. I had a quick look around for us and panicking, where did I put it? It was laying up against the side of the stove. So that's the reason why there was a break in the action here. Put the top plate on for now. I am gonna close it back up. All right, first piece to assemble is where the chimney attaches into the stove. I want to show you a close-up of that in a minute because there's a little locking piece. I guess I can do it with gloves off for a moment. Tilts in and back like that. A little tiny, I guess it looks like a hinge. You actually push down until it snaps. And now that's locked in. Great, great idea. And now we're just going to start building the chimney up. Two pieces of note, of course, is the spark arrestor, which seems to be jammed in here. 
Oh, there we go. That came out. So you know what? That's going to go on a piece. So one of the things I've discovered is this is nine feet tall, or not nine feet tall, but it's tall, right? So how about pre-assembling the sections? So I'm going to put on my narrow pieces, lay those down, assemble my wider pieces. The reducer, the guy line thing, I'm not going to guy it out today, but uh, I think I would if I was out in heavy winds or possibility of a storm. Goes on nice. And the other three sections go on perfectly. You know, that feels pretty stable, just the same. I think I would be guying that out in any heavy winds. Now, the fire grate. So the fire grate goes in. Christmas tree top, or point of the arrow in first. Drops into place. Ash pan. Okay, so now let me just assemble a few things that I'm going to be burning in here and we'll start the fire up. Okay, so what do I have? To start the fire off, I'm going to be using some birch bark. Mostly because I have it. Now, this is not your fine birch bark. Oh, there's a couple of pieces that should light. Now there's a couple of smaller pieces that'll light. All right, that's good. I thought it was all the hard, heavy stuff, but it's not. That should be enough right there. Birch bark is dry. The splits that I have to go in are dry. Everything is dry, so this should light right up. I think, yeah, there's the ash pan slash draft control. And light up birch bark. And a bit better. Give the birch bark half a second to catch on. And I'll start throwing my splits in. Everything I'm using today is old dried maple. Some of it quite old, but still good, especially for this purpose. So my intent is obviously to get a really hot fire going in this stove to see what it does. I think this is probably a good time to lift those side legs up or side handles, panels, before I can't. All right, we'll call that rookie mistake number two. What was rookie mistake number one? Did anybody pick it up? I forgot to fold the legs out. So in between getting the wood ready, I realized I hadn't folded the legs out. So then they are now opening up off of the ground. All right. I like this firebox, very wide. I can get a lot of wood in here. Let's see you catch wood. I wonder. I'm looking to see how much of a difference it makes having the door shut and having all the draft come in through the ash pan slash uh, draft control. And it is, it's making the difference I had hoped for. In other words, what it's doing is forcing air in and under that fire grate so that it's uh, catching on a little quicker. I'm starting to hear the roar you look for inside of a wood stove. And I'm starting to see a little smoke come out of the top of the chimney, all good. So one of the things I'm watching for here right off the top is smoke leaking. Now the fire's not going well enough yet for that to really start to appear but I'm looking for smoke leaking. I don't know about off-gassing. I don't know that there's any lacquers on this. It looks like straight up stainless steel, but just the same, it's always good. First time with any wood stove, especially one that appears to be lacquered, is to get it outside free of any enclosures so that you can burn off any coatings on it, let it off-gas, so to speak. 
Yeah, that's starting to catch on. That's a little bit better. Get a few more of these in there. Ah, there's an issue. Not an issue, but a, something to be careful of. I poked that plate from underneath and lifted it. So I'm looking for those air leaks. I'm also looking to see what happens to that aluminum plate. I'm trying to imagine a way that I could get this off once it's hot. I'm thinking like you could lip, put something under the lip of it to do that with, but uh, not for this fire. This fire is all about getting a really hot one going in here. But for future fires, I want to know if that top plate's going to warp. Apparently there is a risk of it, even in the instructions for the stove itself, is that there is a potential for that to warp, but it's supposed to settle down and go back into true. I'm wondering if it would have been a good idea, first burn, to put a big, heavy cast iron pan or pot or Dutch oven or something on top of this to kind of keep it down to see what would happen. All right, I am getting some smoke leakage around here but it's starting to roar up that pipe. Excellent. One more piece. Close the door over. And the roar just actually increased as I closed the door. So I'm going to give it as much air as it wants to get the hottest fire going. I'm not looking to dampen this down for an extended burn. I just want to get a lot of heat in here to see what effect it has on the stove. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break away now for a few minutes. I will keep feeding the fire, and once it's roaring hot, hot, then I'll bring it back. So I've had the stove running now for just over 30 minutes. My intention to let it go an hour, hour and a half. Got lots of wood and I'm in no rush, so. Uh, the only thing I can see happening to the stove, which was totally expected, is the change in color to the stainless steel. The chimney, all the larger sections have changed colors, but not the smaller section. So it looks like the heat only goes up, or the, the most heat on, is in the lower half of the chimney. It is roaring nicely. Something I've uh, noticed about the ash pan slash draft control is after you open it up an inch and a half, you're really not actually adding any more air to it because it's limited by the size inside there. And I can hear it slow down and pick up, and that's about as far as it, you know, it doesn't seem to get any louder or any more air in pulling it out past that point. Let's open up and have a look inside. Oh, listen to that. Drafting like a champ. Lovely. Intense heat coming out of there, which was the whole point. Uh, any smoke that I saw in the beginning coming out around the top plate, the aluminum top plate, has since stopped. I see no off-gassing. Uh, the only sm smell I got off of it was, I think, the metal itself heating up. I'm not seeing any like uh, fumes or anything coming off of the sides or the top or anywhere else. And the top plate has not worked as they suggested it might. It's staying true. That's cool. You know, that's good. Uh, you know, they, they warn you against something happening and then it doesn't happen. That's a bonus, right? The window is staying nice and clear so the smoke isn't uh, building up. Wow, that's hot. That is throwing some heat. That's a hot stove. Okay, that's the whole point of this exercise, is to get this as hot as we could. Let it cool down, take a look at it. So as I said, I'll let it go for another half hour to an hour. Once it's all cooled down, we'll take a look at the stove and see what happened. All right, I'm back inside and I'm ready to give you my observations after that first initial burn of this hot tent stove from Viver. So right off of the top, 
boy, oh boy, does this work well. I'm really super impressed with this stove. It is such a clean burning stove and hot. Boy, did it ever get hot. Uh, in fact, so clean, and I, I really have to share this with you. This is quite amazing. There's just absolutely no soot. All I did to the stove when I got it back inside was to check for ash, and, and that was it. Let me show you the ash pan. That's it. There was so little white ash left in there that I, I really didn't have to do anything else. Just dump that into a garbage can and it was all good. So that was impressive. This is the fire grate. Look at the fire grate. That's where the fire sat is on top where you can see that little bit of discoloration. But other than that, it's, it's clean. All I did is wipe it off with a soft cloth. I didn't try to clean it or anything to show you. So, yep, that was pretty impressive. Let me open up and show you the inside. It, you probably won't be able to see it clearly, but it almost looks brand new, except for the discoloration of the stainless steel. It is just clean, absolutely clean inside. The glass, you can see my finger through, no sooting on that, no sooting on the door. And when I did look at each of the pipe sections, they were pretty much clean. A little bit towards the top where it got a little cooler, it started to condense, but the lower sections of the pipe, perfectly clean. It just super impressed me. Let me share with you this aluminum plate. This is the way it sat on the stove. There's the top size that was uh, exposed outwards. There's the bottom. Absolutely perfectly clean. While we're talking about the aluminum plate, one of the comments I had was, I wondered if this would warp. And when I was outside, I could see no evidence of it warping. But now that I look at it, there is a little bit of a warp in this direction. And when I set it back in, you'll be able to see what I mean. You'll be able to see that it's rocking a little bit back and forth. So uh, that was warned for or accounted for in the instructions that came with it. But it did say that it would true itself out. Well, hopefully the next time I put this on, I might just flip it over and build a fire, flip it over and see if the heat then trues it throughout. Uh, I may in fact put a, a heavy cast iron on top just to give it some weight to help it true down. Uh, I don't say that is a big issue beyond the fact that the gap that is created by that little bit of warping may be a place where smoke is going to come out. We did see that occurring outside, but it wasn't, didn't seem to be a big issue. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's about the only, what is the only place any smoke was coming out from was around right there. And I think that was only, I only saw that when I, when you got a little bit of a breeze and a downdraft, which can happen, of course. So it is something to think about. Yeah. Other than that, everything is almost like it's brand new. The only way you know this had been used is the discoloration of the stainless steel from the heat. Overall, very, very impressive stove. Everything functions exactly the way it's supposed to. Okay, I think what I'll do now is I'll open it up for comments and questions from you. I will be putting all the information I have for this in the video description. The only thing I'll say is just remember that this was not a full on review. This was just a preview. I hope to have a dozen, maybe two dozen fires in this before I come back and give you more of a long term use review of it. But what I can say is so far, I like it. It really does work well. All right. Having said all of that, Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.